Hi all. So in this lecture, we'll see about more about this for loop. So in this section, we'll see about uh, how to traverse contents in a data sequence. So loops actually visit loop actually visits each number in a sequence of number generated by the range function. We have already seen this range function. So I'll show that example and I will understand. So if you are finding there's a list function. So what happens is list of range. So we have already seen this range function. And if you simply find this range function, so it is actually we are trying to use another function called uh, list function. So this list function refers a special type of sequence called a list. This is actually refers to a special type of sequence called list. It's a sequence. So what happens is if you have simply generate this another function, range of for a big Q, it will return and we have stored we giving another function list and the value is stored in that list. So what happens is it will return the sequence of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. So if you are specifying this, another thing we will do is what we have to do is we have already seen this function 1, 4. List of range of 4, then the value will be 0. So it will be 1, 2, 3 only. So if you are specifying range of 4, then the value will be 0, 1, 2, 3. And if you are specifying range 1, 4, then it will be 1, 2, 3 only. So in this way, you have to differentiate this uh, range function. We have already seen this. So this is a Java syntax for variable in sequence. So it is a sequence. We can do something with that variable. We can do something with that variable. So if you want, I'll show some example. For number in. And we are specifying this sequence 1, 2, 3. I have specified the sequence and I have put a column here. Now I am different. You can simply print, you can do anything with that sequence. So we are including a sequence here. You can do anything with that sequence. So if you this number, you will get 1, 2, 3. Now, if you want to print like for character in, this is also possible. Hello, how are you? Something like this. And simply printing this character. And I want to end, I don't want to end in a new line. I want to end in the new space. I am specifying a space as the M. I'm specifying this space as the M now. So it will be printed like this. Oh, so this is a sequence of characters. So this is a sequence of characters. So what I have asked is I have to print those character one by one and it will end with a space. So if after F there will be a space, then after E there will be a space, after everything there will be a space and it will be printed as well. So any sequence can also be specified using this uh, thing. So this is a traverse in the contents of a data sequence. Then specifying the steps in the result. So if you want to skip some numbers, it is also possible in this case. So if you are including the same list of range of, if you are giving simply like 1, 7, 1. So this is equivalent to giving as 1, 2, 3, well, range of 1, 7. But if you want to skip some of the numbers, so if you want to skip some numbers, like if you want to print only one other number, then you can add, include a third parameter for this range function. So what happens is 
it will skip uh, second number. So after one, it will print three, it will skip this four, and it will print five. And after uh, this number, there is no other number. So one, two, three, one, three, five. So if we want to skip some more numbers, like we want to skip three numbers each, it is also possible. So you have to input one, seven, comma, three. So it will skip to uh, second and third number. Then it will print four like this so it is possible to skip certain numbers in this uh, range function also so in this range function we have to include a third parameter so if you are not including it it specifies that it is less one so every number will be printed this is every other number every third number will be or every third number will be printed so in this way you can uh, skip this numbers also okay next another type is there loops that Found out. We have seen only found loops. Now there is another loop that if we want to count down from we start with upper bound and if we have to go down to lower bound, it is also possible. So we will see some examples for range. You can specify as 10, comma, 0, comma and minus one so this specifies a uh, lo loops uh, that loop that count down and if you want you can print this count and check it what is it so it will start from 10 so it will start from 10 and we are specified at minus one so it will count from 10 to 9 then 8 7 6 right generally up to 1 it will so and go to 0 we have already seen we have already seen the upcount loop it will go up to only one so 10 to 1 we can count like this also so if you want you can simply print this list of you can print this and see what are what is stored in the list okay list of we print this thing. You can see that the list is like this 10, 9, 8, 7. So it will take these values 10, 9, 8, 7, like this. So these are some of the loops that count now. So this is also possible. So what we have to do is we have to specify this minus one. This will be the lower bound and this will be the upper bound. So we have to do the reverse. This will be upper bound and this will be lower bound minus. And I'll give another example. If you want, you can count even numbers till seven. Then, if you want to count off even numbers up to ten, uh, first even numbers. If you want, you can simply print and see that uh, ten even numbers. You can see this program. So, if you want to print this, you can simply check that example. Okay. Then uh, there is also uh, there is an else part in for loop also. So this is a specialty of Python. So if you want to have an else part, it is possible. So if you want, if you want val in range of five, I'll show that example for value in range of five. And then simply change the variable name. That's all. Value. Okay. Now, if you want, you can include the else part also. It is also possible in this case. Okay. So if you print like this, you'll get this thing. Now, if you want to include an else part, If you want to include this else part, it is also possible. Like this, it is possible. You have to include for, and then if you want to include print something loop stop. Maybe loop will give us loop complete. 
Okay. So what happens is it will start from it will this for loop will be executed, it will print from 0 to 4. After that, since it reaches uh, it has reached the upper bound, what it is it has to do, it will print the else part. So it will print as loop completed. So it will be printed. So there is an else part in for loop also. This is default. It did not include everywhere this else part at all. Okay. So I have given some four exercises. This is a simple exercise. You can do it. You try it. So you have to write a loop that prints your name 100 times. Each output should begin on a new line. Then there is another uh, write a loop that prints the first 128 ASCII values. You have already seen the ASCII values in the previous lecture. You have to print all the ASCII characters and the corresponding character also. Then uh, third question is assume that the variable test thing refers to a thing. Write a loop that prints each character in the string followed by its ASCII value. So if you include some character, some check in this test string, you have to print the each character and the ASCII value of that character. And then another example is there, another exercise is there, find the output of the following statement. You have to print all these things. Find range of 10, list range of 10, then list range of 2, comma 8, list range of 2, comma 25. You just simply print and see what will be the thing. So this is the reference book. Fundamentals of Python by Chai Chandan Lambert. Okay, thank you.